All right, what's going on, everybody? So I want to talk about a couple things real quick. I mean, I've learned so much. I wish that I knew this stuff when I was like 19 and 20. But, you know, when you're a young kid, can't nobody tell you anything. It just, you know, you're doing whatever you want to do. You think you know it all. And so we get ourselves in a lot of uh, trouble. We do a lot of things that is dysfunctional. Part of that, especially for men, is so many of us are growing up without fathers. So we don't have an example of you know what a man is you know a lot of us we grow up thinking that being a man is you know you work hard or even you're loud or maybe some some dysfunction that was modeled in front of you you know uh, either a wife or a husband we go into marriage and relationships doing stuff that our parents did that wasn't right this is a lack of a relationship with God a lack of a biblical understanding of what a man is supposed to be what a woman is supposed to be so I made a statement. I said that love is not enough to keep a marriage together. And that is true. You will find many divorced people who will tell you in a heartbeat, yeah, I still love the person I divorced. I just couldn't live with them anymore. I just couldn't deal with them anymore. I just couldn't put up with them anymore. I'll die for them right now, but I just couldn't, you know, I still love them, but we just, we had to go our separate ways. So obviously love is not enough to keep a marriage together. It's all about commitment, discipline, and vows. The problem is, and especially with women, I'm going to get to men too in a second. Women, you know, you grow up listening to all these, you know, romantic songs. And a lot of times, you know, especially back in the day, that's the kind of stuff they're pumping to women. You know, girls are playing house at a young age and stuff like that. And so you're playing house your whole life pretty much. So you got an idea of how you think it should go. And then you expect the grown man to come, you know, play house with you to do what you had in mind that you've been doing your whole life. You've had more practice at it, right? So what happens anyways, is that a lot of women, they have this romanticized idea. Like if you talk to most women, especially when they're younger, they can tell you what they think their, their wedding is going to be like, what their perfect man is. And it's not like they got to sit there and be like, mm. no, they'll tell you, you know, my perfect man, he would be 6'2", he would do this, he would do that, he would look like this, what their dream life would be like, what their house would be like, what their goals would be like. Women put a lot of, you know, thought into that kind of stuff. And especially, you know, back in the day, you've seen it, you know, women or girls were playing house and men were out there playing Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers and all that kind of stuff. So... <clears throat> What ends up happening is, like I always say, people fall in love with the idea of a wedding, but not the reality of a marriage. And I heard Dr. Miles Monroe say it best, right? You see a, a, a cooking book, right? And on one side, on the right side, you see a picture of a birthday cake. And on the left side, you see the recipe. Most people, they skip right over the recipe and go straight to the birthday cake and say, man, I want this birthday cake. This looks delicious. But then when they go back, they don't want to follow the instructions in the recipe. They don't want to do what it takes to actually get that birthday cake. And when they start reading the recipe, they're like, ah, oh, no, nah, I might want to take a shortcut here. And then they wonder why their cake doesn't look like the cake in the book. And he said, look, the, the guy who wrote the cookbook, he's promising you that, look, if you follow these instructions, you will get this cake. Most people when they hear what it actually takes to have that good marriage, they're not trying to hear it. When they hear what it takes to actually be a wife or be a husband, they don't want to hear it because they just feel like if I just meet the right person, I'm going to magically have the birthday cake without the recipe. So they feel that, well, if I don't have this cake, it's because you're the problem. So if I find the right man, we're going to have this cake. If I find the right woman, we're going to have this cake right and so there's a recipe that tells you how to make the cake so a lot of times like i said with women uh they go into you know a marriage relationship with this idea of what their perfect man is and then when they get with a guy once they marry him they start trying to make him fit what is their perfect idea of a man so instead of follow and a lot of people do this both men and women you don't fall in love with the reality of what the person is you fall in love with your idea of them like what you think they could be and i often say this don't fall in love with your idea of a person fall in love with the reality of who they are don't fall in love with somebody's uh potential because they might not be as committed to their potential as you uh women are really good at seeing potential in a man but if that man doesn't want to live up to that potential then you fall in love with his potential and then fall in love with the person and after years of him never me reaching that potential now you're upset now you're bitter and now you're frustrated right so 
with men, we're kind of simple. We're kind of stupid, right? She looks pretty. She'll look good in the team jersey. And so, oh, yeah, she would look good sitting in the passenger seat. She would look good rocking my jersey. She would look good on my arm. So you put her in the team jersey, but she's not even supporting, uh, you know, what the team actually stands for. She doesn't even believe in it. That's why she tearing down your dreams and she doesn't support your vision. Because And check this out. The Bible says a wise woman built their house and a foolish one that tears it down, tears it down with her mouth. All right. And then also understand that she can't be a helpmeet to a deadbeat. You don't got no plan, no vision, no direction for your life. And you just expecting her to ride. The Bible says without a vision, the people perish. You're not telling her, babe, we're going in this direction. I got these goals and, and I got these dreams. So she's sitting there and she has all this stuff inside of her, her God given God made women to be a helpmate. But you ain't giving her nothing to do. You ain't giving her nothing to support. So now you guys are just both, you know, just sitting there and you're frustrated and, and you just thought it was going to be good because she's pretty. Now, how men, like how I told you, women fantasize about their wedding day and what their house can be like. What men, it's really simple. All right. See, women are, are difficult to please men. It's very simple. Sex, food, give me a little space to watch my game. And that's it. All right, I don't care what any woman says. Your man can be mad at you if you give him some sex and some food and and uh you know what I'm saying a little space you just respect him. It's going to be all right. You give you you guys sitting there arguing, you give him some sex. That's why sex is a gift inside of marriage. Let me say that real quick. A lot of people they don't understand the value of sex and they don't value sex because they ran around having sex with everybody before they got married and by the time they got married sex was just this old thing it's no big deal I've already done everything seen everything but the problem with that is sex is a tool this is why the Bible says not to keep sex away from your your spouse right and if you do only do it with uh, for fasting and it says before you do it go get the approval of your spouse before you just oh uh, because a lot of people people, they, the Bible already knew, a lot of people get mad, I'm fasting, we can't have sex, I'm fasting, no, you just, you're using sex as a tool, or you're using sex as a, as a, as a punishment, right, so, what happens when you have sex, you come together and you create that bond, right? Two flesh become one. So you come together and you re-strengthen that bond. That's why people have angry sex and make up sex. And that's why you've been saying you're going to break up with that boyfriend, but then you guys always have sex one more time. And then you re-establish that bond because it's a gift inside of marriage. It's See, why? check this out. The devil loves for you to have sex outside of marriage. He loves for you to have so much, to have all the sex you want outside of marriage but inside of marriage he doesn't want you having sex and most marriages that fail you will find out one of the things that they were not doing anymore was having sex but anyways like i said get back to it so you're looking at the cookbook you see the cake you see the recipe on the left everybody says they want the cake but not everybody wants to follow the recipe now the bible gives us a recipe for success the bible gives us a recipe for what a man is supposed to be what a woman is supposed to be he created adam he gave him a purpose he had relationship with god and then god brought eve already into paradise so what does this let you know women don't be trying to find a man and bring him into the garden he should already be in the garden he should already have some things set up he should already have a relationship with God. He should already have a, a purpose and destiny. Okay. He should have a general sense of uh, what he wants to do in his life. Now, why did marriages last longer in America a couple years ago, statistically speaking, because of this thing that is so bad nowadays, gender roles. Now I'm not saying that I believe women should just be at the house barefoot and having kids. But the reason why the man was respected more back in the day is because the man went to work. He worked his butt off. He brought the check home to his wife. He paid the bills. All right. He took care of his family. He provided the house. And then what started happening is men went to war in World War II. Women had to go to the factories to make the bullets. The men came home from the war. The women weren't in the home no more. Now the women are out there making the money. So it's like, oh, well, what do I need you for? Now, the Bible says that a man is supposed to work, right? It's been that way since the beginning of time. But now a lot of women say, well, I can do what you do. I think I can do it better than you. So where do I need you for? So that that respect is not there even in a marriage where it starts with you know uh the man you know maybe he is providing and stuff but then there comes to a point where it's like you know what 
I can do what you're doing. I don't need you. I can leave. I can take the kids. I can be the mom and the dad. I can do it all by myself. So that respect is not there because society has really uh, destroyed the thing. Now, I'm not saying that you know, like I said, women can't work or nothing like that. But there was a respect for the man as a head. And it was acknowledged that it was his job to go out there and pay the bills. Now, everybody has this thing, you know, like, you know, all oh, the man and the woman, they're going to come together and, and she's going to pay half and she's going to. It's not really supposed to be like that. The man should be handling the business. And that's where the respect comes from. Right? And you should let the man be the man. Now, on another aspect, right? One thing we always see women doing, there's no good men out here. All men are dogs. No, the men that you are dating are dogs. Now, unless most, unless us men are like movie stars or something like that, or we're super rich and popular, it's different for a man. Now, I'm pretty confident. I can go out here and I can find me a woman and I can engage and start talking to her and I feel that I can win her over. I'm pretty confident in myself. I know that if, if I have access to you, like say I work with you, I could probably get you to like me after a while. I can win you over. But... I don't just have women throwing themselves at me every day, all right? And a lot of women, it's changing a little bit. I mean, I have been surprised of some of the direct kind of messages that I get from women shooting their shot nowadays. Women have gotten a little bold. But for the most part, females who usually do that kind of stuff are kind of fast. You know what I'm saying? They're kind of loose. And <clears throat> it's kind of a, a red flag because if, if I'm not no movie star kind of guy and you're just throwing yourself at me like that, Nine times out of ten, you've probably did that with a couple other guys before me. Because, you know, I'm nice, but I'm not all that. That's the mentality of a man. That must just be who you are as a woman. So, what I'm saying is, as a man... You know, like when you're out in the club, the man has to approach the woman and, and buy the woman a drink and ask her out and, and get her phone number. So I always tell men, if you knew how many men were waiting in line trying to date your girl and, and waiting for you to mess up, you would be nicer to your girl. There's, women are rejecting advances from men all the day. Now, what I always tell ladies, just because a man is giving you attention doesn't mean he's really into you. Men will be motivated to give you attention because they want something from you. So, you know, I want to have sex with you. So I'm going to tell you what I want, what you want to hear. If I, if I know anything about women, I know what women want to hear. I know what to say and talk is cheap. I'm just motivated to do all the things that you like so I can try to get what I want so I can hit it. All right. For lack of a better word. So you're like, oh, my gosh, he's so nice to me. He's this, this, this. And the reality is he just wants to hit it. Right. He just wants to get something from you. He just wants to use you. So, women, you can't get excited because a man is giving you attention. You can't get excited because a man is liking your statuses and he did a little something for you. Stop getting excited over the bare minimum. Stop getting uh, letting a man come in your life and do the bare minimum. And then he acting like he's the best thing that ever happened to you. No. So there's all always men that are trying to come and talk to women and women are rejecting them but knowing that women you got to take some responsibility because you can't say all men are dogs no the man that you chose to entertain the man that you chose to lay down with the man that you chose you could you could pick any guy that you want but you chose to entertain the dude who didn't have a car you chose to entertain the dude who didn't have a job you chose to entertain the dude who wasn't on the street why or who was on the street why because of your pride oh you know i'm gonna change him and i'm gonna put this thing on him and he's gonna be different and i'm gonna hold it down for him and then you trying to do god's job and one Wonder why you fail because you really think that you're different than the last five or six females before you who tried to change him and now you're disappointed and you're hurt right you got to take responsibility for that you got to have a relationship with god and say you know what lord do you want me to date him should i give him my phone number and he'll tell you no don't date him don't waste your time he's no good for you he'll tell you but you got to listen. But most of the time you don't listen. You follow your feelings. You follow your, I just like how he makes me feel. Oh, um, and we just have a connection. But you don't realize the man can manipulate that connection because if you know how a woman thinks, then you know what to say. That's why they say what? Women fall in love with what? What they hear. Men fall in love with what they see. So like I said, with a man, you looking at a woman and oh, she just so fine. And you assume because she's fine, she's a good woman. She looked good on the outside, but her inside is completely jacked up and messed up completely jacked up right so what you got to understand about marriage is that it takes more than oh i love you and i just feel i'm gonna tell you right now it's no secret i love both of my kids mothers 
right? But I was very, I take all responsibility for it. You know, I, I, I would never say anything bad about either one of my children's mothers. But I learned, I learned through that, right, that me loving somebody hard is not enough. You have to be with somebody who says, look, this is what it is. We're honest with one another. I'm committed to you no, ma no matter what. And I understand that me being committed to you, sometimes we're going to have to sacrifice. Sometimes we're going to have to compromise. Sometimes I'm going to have to do things that go against my feelings. Sometimes it can't always be my way. But no matter what, come hell or high water, good or bad, we're going to figure this out. We might have a fight. But we're going to figure this out. We might disagree, but at the end of the day, we're going to figure this out. Most people don't go into marriage with that mentality anymore. Soon as something goes bad, I'm going to find somebody else. I'm going to go do it on my own. I don't have to put up with this. I don't have to deal with this. And you forget all about the vows that you took before the Lord. I can just do it by myself. I can make it by myself. I don't. And, and a lot of people have the mentality that it's really going to be different if I just find the right woman. It's going to be different if I just find another man. And that, once again, is pride, not willing to admit that you had something to do. Like I said, you have the birthday cake and you have the recipe. So a lot of people, they think, if I just find a different man, I can have that birthday cake. If I just find a different woman, I can have that birthday cake. But the cook gives you the picture of the birthday cake and he gives you the recipe and says, if you follow this recipe, you can have this cake. Right. So a lot of times we're looking at other people's marriage and relationships and we want that, but they followed the recipe. You want what that woman has. Oh, I wish you would just treat me like her. And, and he does this for her and he does that for her. But you don't see what that woman has put up with over the years that is given that. But you don't see what she has sacrificed to get where she is. You only been married for six months, but you want to be treated how the woman been married for 20 months. She done put in the time. She done put in, put in, uh, you know, washing his dirty drawers and seeing the bad side of him. So that man has the utmost respect. She she done been loyal when it's hard and you say man i want that birthday cake but then if you sit there and you talk to that woman and she begins to tell you everything that she's had to put up with man you're like well i don't want to do that let me just find a different man let me just find a different woman and it's the same thing when it works the other way because you know the reality is you don't know a person till you really live with them right you only probably know about 10 percent of them because especially in the beginning they're trying to impress you they're going to show you the side that they want you to see. But then once you get married, once you start living together, you know how men go into marriage? Men thinking like, especially a young dude who don't know no better. Oh, we're going to get married and I'm about to have all the sex I want. She always going to be ready to give it to me. I'm going to be tearing that up and all that kind of stuff. Then you get married. And, you know, when you first met her, she was always looking cute. Never catch her slipping. Now you married and she come downstairs looking like your little brother. Eh, eh, get off of me. I'm not in the mood for that. Now you're only getting some, you know, twice a week, three times a week, once a week. You thought you was going to get some every day. Now you're mad because you went into the marriage with this wrong perception that, oh, it's just going to be a sex party all the time. And, and she just going to be looking fine all the time. Now it isn't that. And you got to love her even when you're not having sex. And you got to love her even when she's not looking that cute. And you got to love her even when she tells you no. And then on top of that, you got to be loyal because you go to work and you got all these women trying to, you know, well, I'll give you some and I'll flirt with you. And so here, here's another thing. This is why, and I said this earlier in the video, the Bible, the devil wants you to have all the sex in the world outside of marriage. And he wants you to have no sex inside of marriage because marriage is a gift from God for what marriage. So check this out. The Bible says that, you know, uh, don't keep sex from your husband or your wife. And if you're going to do it, do it only for a season to fast. But you better agree and then come back together and have sex again because sex is good for for uh, the marriage. Right. But the problem is you sit there and, you know, you use sex as a weapon, you use sex as a tool. And then check this out. Don't assume that your spouse is going to do the right thing. This is the biggest problem that I've seen in marriage. Right. Because you're a Christian. I'll just use the ladies, for example, for a second, because he says he's a Christian man. I can just treat him. However, 
I'm not going to give him no sex. I'm not going to do anything because, you know, he just going to serve the Lord anyway. He just going to go to church and pray. So I don't have to take care of him because he ain't going to cheat on me anyway because he's supposed to be a man of God. Stop assuming that they're going to do the right thing. I always tell people your soul is saved, but your flesh is not. Your flesh is still your flesh. Your flesh is still corrupt. So a wise person. I'm going to close the doors to the enemy. Stop getting mad when you don't compliment your wife. You don't flirt with your life, with your wife. And then she go to her job and some dude's over there flirting with her. And, and now she just melting. Oh, my God. You think that I'm pretty? And now you want to be all mad at her and, and get all upset. Why, why are you flirting with him and blah, blah, blah. But you left them doors open. I'm not saying it's it's excuse for her behavior. But instead of having that problem, appreciate your wife. Compliment your wife. Fill her up so she's so full by the time she goes around these other dudes. Because notice, most females, and I'm just going to be real, most women who are easy to get in the bed, they have father wounds. That's why or they have low self-esteem. You can come to them and you can tell them, oh, girl, you're pretty. And then they're just taking their clothes off. Oh, my. Because they, they're not used to getting complimented, right? Uh, they, they like that attention because they never got it from their father, right? You tell them one thing and they just completely melt. They let their walls down. They let their guard down. You start talking that talk and it's easy to get them in the bed. It's usually because there's voids and there's wounds and there's hurt in their life. Same thing with the man. Stop sitting there not giving your man sex week after week after week. You know he likes sex. You know he likes getting it. Then you want to send him to the job. And and you got this other girl because this is how people always think. Don't nobody want my husband. Don't nobody want my wife. Oh, somebody want so what you're taking for granted. Somebody would love to have. I know you don't want to hear it. Somebody would love your husband, the one that that you just looking at. He ain't all that. He ain't no Denzel. He ain't no this. It's some women out there who will have your husband immediately, right away. They would switch places with you in a heartbeat. So. Sometimes you got to you got to give your man something. It don't got to be all, you know, we're people act like we're not supposed to talk about this stuff in the church even though the songs of Solomon talks about it all throughout the Bible. The Bible talks about everything. Oh, don't talk about say you 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 need to give your man something. It don't got to be some all long drawn out thing. But that's the reality. The Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. I wonder why that was. I wonder what Adam was doing in the garden that made God say, "Hmm, I need to give him a helpmate." You know, so the bot the, the moral of the story is, uh, you know, take care of your spouse. Don't just assume my spouse is going to do the right thing. You sitting there just mistreating them, not appreciating them, not giving them sex. And then you mad when, when he when he you find out he got a porn addiction. Now, you well, I thought you were a Christian, but you wasn't helping. You mad when you find her messaging some dude on the internet and he's flirting, going back and forth, but you just was taking her for granted. I just, I just assumed you was going to do the right thing. No, you got to cover one another. Mm -mm, ain't no Pernod, ain't none of that coming. I'm about, and I already know some negative people going to get in. This is why you're miserable because you're negative. Some negative people going to get in the conversation. Well, I had sex with him all the time and he still cheated on me. You know, that's what people always, there's probably another area. Maybe you had sex with him all the time, but there was something wrong with the sex life. Y'all needed to communicate or maybe you were verbally abusing him. Maybe you were challenging. Let me, let me be real transparent with you. One of the reasons back in the day when I when I cheated in one of my relationships is because my woman was just talking down on me, you know what I'm saying, all the time, uh, getting in my face, you know what I'm saying, like wanting to fight me, like it's like, you know, like you're dealing with a man, so now I don't feel manly. So one of the reasons I, I cheated was so I could feel like a man again. Let me go to a woman who's going to respect me, you know what I'm saying? And then when I would have sex with the other woman, I felt like a man again, as opposed to just when you just in my face and you just running all over me, yelling at me and no respect for me and all that stuff. It made me not feel like a man and I needed to feel like a man. Now, you know what an immature person is going to say? Oh, well, you just wrong and you should, but you was wrong too. You was, you opened the door. You gave the enemy access through the way that, and a lot of people aren't willing to admit that. They'll say, oh, well, they don't take no responsibility. It's it's very rare for somebody to admit, like, I could have did some things better than the marriage or I'm the reason why that marriage failed. But, hey, I'll hit you, I'll hit you guys later. I'll talk a little bit more about later. The I do's and I don'ts of marriage is about to come out pretty soon anyway. That book is going to bless a lot of people. Love you guys.